All righty, we'll get started here. I kind of agree with the starting with the simple ones first. Kind of eases up the nerves a little bit. showing me playing from when I started playing till now when I was a kid with black hair and no wrinkles and not having to wear glasses and all that stuff.
say a little bit about this guitar I'm playing. This is a uh, this was Chet Atkins' first Gibson Country Gentleman. This was this was made for him uh, when he switched from Gretsch to Gibson. This is number zero zero one, <laughs> and uh, and Mike Ian will let me play it this week. And it's got it's got EMG pickups. Uh, Philip and I had to try to change the battery in it, and the battery comes out through the F hole here, and there was a lot of choice words said <laughs> while try, trying to get that out through the F hole. And uh, if you look at the pickup up here, Chet took uh, silver Sharpie and made lines up here so he could do the harmonics up here over the pickup. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a great guitar. If you've seen Chet play on Play Help Me Make It Through the Night with George Benson on TV. This is the guitar. So, uh, and, uh, so I was I was blessed to get to play it for a week and have it in the room and babysit it and worry about it every time I come out of the room and all that stuff. So, so this is a tune that this is a tune that was recorded on this guitar. So he gets up to the room before I do, and I walk in the room, and he's got his eyes like wide open. And he's like, somebody stole Chet's guitar, and I'm just like, I could feel the room starting to do kind of, <laughs> kind of this, and I, I could feel the blood all just drain from my face, you know, and I'm just like, and uh, and then he finally fessed up to it, and I called him a few things, and you know, and all that, you know, and. Yes. He's hit it under the bed. Yeah. And I swore up and down I was gonna pay him back for it and I haven't figured out a better way to do it yet. But I'm but I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> so 
I'll do this one. This is one of my favorites. I heard Scott do it. And one thing about playing down here, you think you're going to play stuff and, and you hear everybody else playing and they're playing it better than you. <laughs> fighting uh, tendonitis or arthritis or something, one of those itises that you get when you, I guess when you get close to 60 years old, one of those, one of the joys of getting not old but older. And, and uh, so it's not the fast stuff that I have a problem with, it's trying to get my thumb up over the neck fast has been the, the problem. So, so anyway, but, so I've been, the doctor told me that I had to not play for about you know, about a month or so, so I mean, I'm a little rusty, so just kind of excuse the mistakes if you see any, and if you, you know, if you want to let them go, that's fine too. But, uh, so anyway, all right, this is an old one here. Let's see if I can get through it. Is that, let's see. See, there was one there.
time I do that. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it that time, but <laughs> right, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna do on this guitar. Oh, here's an old one. I've been trying to play some old Chet stuff because it's his hundredth birthday. It would be his hundredth anniversary of his hundredth birthday. So I do this. This is one I heard. Uh, Let's see, up in, up in the town I grew up in, there was a record store that doubled as the voter registration office, and it was called Valley Music. And my mom and dad had bought me a bunch of Chet records, but they were all kind of like the greatest hits things, like, you know, This Is Chet Atkins or The Best of Chet Atkins, and I had all of those. So I happened to go in this record this store one day, and going through the records, and they had Hi-Fi and Focus which was the first classic Chet record I ever heard. So, I mean, I was, I had heard him playing like, you know, Lady Madonna and stuff like that. And of course, then you're going into like Tiger Rag and stuff like that and just blew my mind, you know, so. But this is a tune from that record. And each one of these tunes, you know, there's stories behind me hearing them and learning them. So, so I sat down and tried to learn this tune back then. and. It was like putting a kid in a semi-truck and expecting him to drive it, so. this suggestion list or to add stuff to it or delete stuff from it, you know, depending on how much guts I have. So let's see, I'll, this is one I'll do. Philip and I don't, Philip doesn't really like this tune and it kind of threw us for a loop one time. Alice threw down.
And that, that was supposed to go like that. That's how it was supposed to go. All right, let's see. I'm gonna do. I'll do one more. This one here, I play play at church usually. Uh, they, they probably want me to learn some new stuff, but on Sunday mornings, I play in the praise band at church, and uh, so I'm playing like more rock and roll stuff there because they're kind of like a contemporary praise band. But this one here, though, this is one of my favorites. Let's see if I can. up here, Philip always tells me to speak right into the mic. It's, I'm not a pro at this, but 
There we go. But anyway, 1996, uh, I met Kirk Sand down here, and he built me this guitar, and uh, really had talked to my wife a whole lot to be able to, you know, to get the go ahead to buy this. I mean, for a couple that had only been married about nine years, uh, $2,700 was a lot of money, you know. And, uh, but I, we lost him this year, and I, that's, um, he, he was my friend, you know, he really was. And he just, when Philip sent me the thing that morning, sent me a message that morning, he had passed away. I mean, it, it really knocked the guts out of me, it really did, because, you know, he not only made a guitar for me, he became a good friend of mine. So, anyway, so I'm going to get off that so I can not get upset up here and all that. But anyway, I'm going to try to play a few more here. And this is one of Jerry Reed's. Chet Atkins note for note. It was the one where he, Chet Atkins goes to the movies and it was all in standard notation. There was no tab. And I had to, uh, so my mom asked me, I think I, I ordered that book when I was about 13. And my mom said, she said, well, you don't know how to read music. And I said, well, I'm going to learn now. So there was a pretty girl at church that I, you know, that the reason I was going to vacation Bible school and all that stuff. And, and she played piano really good, and you know, and she liked me at my guitar playing, which I thought was cool. And uh, so she could read music. So between her and the band teacher at the high school, they taught me how to read music. So I was able to do that, use that book, and uh, I entered the Bland Music Contest in 1980. And, and came in second. You can't ever beat a you can't ever beat a pretty girl playing a flute, you know, in a, in a contest like that. And uh, and I played this tune. Let's see if I can get through a little bit of it. And. Uh,
som må et simpel John Knowles and I got to be really good, got to be good friends. And 1994, Philip Hunt and I came down here for the first time, and I was sitting in Kirk Sand's room back there, and I had been trying to play Cascade a little bit, and I was playing it. And uh, so John said, he said, well, I've written the tab out, but I don't play all of it. Can you come play it? And I only knew half of it. And of course, being being young and stupid back then, I had a lot of guts, and I said, well, I'll, I'll learn it. So I went back to the room and learned it that night at the hotel room and came back and played it the next day. And I mean, now I'd have been a nervous wreck back then, you know, when you're young and stupid, you can do that kind of stuff, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but I'm not gonna try to play Cascade. I mean, that's just, no, he's being a glutton for punishment here. But here, I'll play this one. I don't know why I tuned up. So this, uh, I heard Scott play a bunch of 60s rock stuff, and I usually play this on a D18, but I'm gonna try to play some of it. This was, uh, this would be classic rock now, but when I heard it, it was new rock. So here we go. pretty girls to dance with me. <laughs> Feel sorry for me every now and then. <laughs> one more, one more. Alright. Well, let's do, uh, let's try it, yeah. Now, 
before I play this, I haven't had the guts to play this in front of Richard Smith yet. <laughs> and I don't, this is the first time I've played it anywhere. So, I mean, so I'm not gonna make any promises, but I've, I'm of the, of the opinion, if you're gonna learn a new tune, you've gotta play it in front of people eventually. So, so here we go. And what do you say? Don't go too fast. So I'm gonna try this. If it goes south, we'll just, we'll just quit and say, thank you all for coming. Am I too loud? I get a little credit for being a glutton of punishment enough to try a Richard Smith tune. So anyway, here we go. One, two, three, four. Alright, let's get going here. Alright, let's go. One, two, three, four. 